In this video, we will talk about a couple uh, of the theorems that will help us find the Laplace transform for some family functions that involves the products of a function f of t with um, an exponential function e to the alpha t and uh, the family functions of the products of f of t with a linear functions t. Okay. Well, but first, let's talk about uh, functions of exponential order. So a function f of t is um, defined to be an exponential order functions. If there exists a constant m, a, and big T, such that if you take the absolute value of f of t, it's going to be less than um, m times e to the alpha t for all, all t that is greater than big T. Another way to explain this definition is the function f of t here is guaranteed to be less than a magnitude of a of some exponential functions when t small t here is bigger than big big t which is a threshold right after a certain value of t the absolute value of the function f of t will be less than this functions which means it's grow slower than an exponential functions so if the functions that satisfies this conditions is said to be of exponential order. So the reason why we want to talk about exponential order functions is most functions used in engineering, you know, and scientific applications are of exponential order. And then in order to find the Laplace transform of f of t, uh, we learn that there exists a proper improper integral converges, right? you have a Laplace transform when the improper integral converges, okay? And then if f of t is p piecewise continuous, right? It could be like all straight continuous or it can be piecewise continuous and of exponential order, then is it sufficient enough to show the convergence of this integral when necessary? So if a function's f of t First, it's a piecewise continuous. Second, if it's of exponential order, then you can show the improper integral converges when necessary. So that's why we're interested in learning about the definitions of exponential order function. Well, if a function, and then we can start talking about the two theorems that we can use in order to find Laplace transform when there's, you know, involved of exponential order functions with a products with a an exponential functions here and an exponential order functions f of t and with a product with a linear function t okay first theorem for any piecewise continuous function f piecewise continuous functions and of exponential order then the Laplace transform of e times alpha t times f of t, okay, equals to big F s minus alpha or a, right? Where the big F of s here is a Laplace transform of the function t, okay? So an example of this theorem is if I have a function f of t, let's say sine of 2t. Um, sine of 2t is a function, okay? And then I want to multiply sine of 2t to an exponential function, let's say e to the 2t times sine of t. And I call this is my functions f of t. Now, my goal is I want to find the Laplace transform of this functions. Okay. Well, I can use this theorem here because I know this is the products of a function f of t, you know, um, function sine of 2t with an exponential functions, then um, 
then I know that if I can find the Laplace transform of this functions here, I can just take the Laplace transform of this functions and I move the functions to the right alpha time. Okay, so this is the functions that I'm associating with. And from this functions, I know that f of s here, right, is um, because it's a sign and the Laplace transform of sign. As we know that it is 2 over s squared plus 4. Okay, so this is the Laplace transform of psi and from here you need to convert it to f, big F of s minus alpha, where alpha is, this is alpha right here. So then big F of s minus alpha will be 2 over s, alpha is 2, so minus alpha is minus 2 squared plus 4. So this is the answer that you're looking for. So this is the Laplace transform of the function f of t that we're looking at. Again, this is the function f of t right here. And this is how we use this theorem in order to find the Laplace transform of this product of the two functions, knowing the Laplace transform of sine of 2t. All right, so that's the first theorem. How about the second theorem? Um, the second theorem says, for any piecewise function, continuous functions f and of exponential order. There's two conditions here. The, the Laplace transform of t multiplied by f of t equals to the negative, negative derivative of big F of s in terms of s where big F of s is the Laplace transform of this F of t. Okay, again, negative derivative of big F of s will be the Laplace transform of t times F of t. For an example, I consider, um, maybe I can use the same function sine 2t, and instead of multiply by e to the t, I multiply by t, okay? I call this is my function f of t. And again, the goal is to find the Laplace transform of this function. For using the theorem, first, I need to find the Laplace transform of this function. I call it big F, right? And I know that this is the Laplace of sine of 2t will be equals to 2 over s squared plus 4, right? And then the next step is because I, mul I multiply this functions by t using this theorem, I need to find the negative derivative of d over ds of the f of s. So that means I need to find the derivative of this functions. So the derivative of this function will be um, 0 minus 2 times the derivative of s squared is 2s divided by s squared plus 4 and everything squared. And I can simplify it, right? Negative 4s over s squared plus 4, everything squared. And this is here is the Laplace transform of t time sine of 2t. So again, if you see an a function of this form and you want to find the Laplace transform, you can use this theorem. First, find the Laplace transform of f of t. Second, find the negative derivative of this Laplace transform to be the Laplace transform of t times f of t. All right, using these two theorems here, we can extend the table. To some reminder, if you have a function t, then t is a t to the one, right? 
then the Laplace transform of t to the one is one over s squared. And in general, if you have an exponential, if you have an, um, a power of functions t to the n, then the Laplace transform of t to the n will be n factorial divided by s raised to n plus one. And you can apply n equals to one right here, okay? And if you have t times f of t, then you will have this, right? Where f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t, okay? Now you have t times e to the alpha t. If t times e to the alpha t, then what can we use? We can use this theorem here. First, we want to find the Laplace transform of e to the alpha t. And we know the Laplace transform of e to the alpha t is um, one over s minus alpha, okay? And then we need to take the negative derivative of this functions, which is, if you take the derivative of this functions, you will get negative one over s minus alpha r square. Not negative one, it should be negative one times s. So which is just negative s. Negative s over s divided by square. It's just the derivative, right? And the negative of the negative here. So this is the derivative of um, one over s minus alpha and negative to the negative, you will have s over s minus alpha square. All right, and then this is just the uh, formula, right, or of the theorem. We we'll say you will have big F of S minus alpha, where um, big F of S is the Laplace transform of F of T. Then the next functions we have is E to the alpha T times sine to the beta T. Again, we can use this, the first theorem the theorem right here to find it. So first I have to find the Laplace transform of sine beta t, which is beta over s squared plus beta squared, okay? Well, this is the Laplace transform of sine beta t. And then we have to move this functions to the right alpha unit. So then the idea that the Laplace transform should be that uh, it is a constant minus alpha, alpha here, square plus beta square. So this is the Laplace transform. For the cosine of t is very similar. This cosine of t will be s squared plus beta squared. Um, and then you can transform it, but then your s here is a variable. You also have to transform the s square plus beta square. Okay. How about for t times e to the alpha t times sine of beta t. Well, first we can try to find the Laplace transform of these functions, which is we found here, up here, right? And then using the second theorem here, we take the derivative of this Laplace transform and take the opposite of it. So the formula for this should be find the negative derivative of this. Okay. And similarly, you can find the negative derivative of this 
formula here to find the Laplace transform of these functions. So from here we can, um, so the derivative of this function should be uh, b is zero. So you have zero minus the derivative of the second one, the derivative of beta square should be zero. The derivative of this should be two s minus alpha and divided by everything divided by s minus alpha square plus beta square, everything square okay if i simplify this it's going to be negative 2 s minus alpha divided by s minus alpha square plus beta square and everything square similarly i can just find the derivative of this functions here it's going to be um, well don't forget that you have a negative here negative negative so negative and negative will be just positive okay for the the last functions we'll have so the derivative of the first will be just one multiplies with the second so it's s minus alpha square plus beta square minus s minus alpha multiply by the derivative of this should be just two s minus alpha. Derivative beta square is just zero. So everything divided by s minus alpha square plus beta square, everything square. Okay. And then you can simply find this. You're gonna have s minus alpha, s minus alpha. Um, S minus alpha so to simplify this we have running out of space here I'm going to simplify it a little bit and then I'm going to write here but it should be should be simple enough S minus alpha square minus B square divided by S minus alpha square plus B square and everything square. Aha. Uh -huh. I found one thing that I miss here is this one. This should have two beta. The derivative of this should be beta times two. Okay. And then here you have two beta after you simplify it. All right. It's not very pretty, but it would work. Now you have full tables of most of the Laplace transform for a lot of different functions, right? And again, if we learn how to use these two theorems, we can just derive all of this uh, Laplace transform for all of these functions. Well, let's take a look at the three uh, examples here. We're given three um, functions. And can you find the Laplace transform for these three functions? In the first function, you recognize that, oh, it's just the products of a functions and an exponential functions. Right? 
And we know that beta is three, and we know that alpha is negative two. All right, so then using the first theorem, you the first thing you wanna do is you wanna find the Laplace transform of sine of three T. This function's right here. And we know that it's gonna be three over S squared plus nine, right? And then um, the, res the, the answer for this is gonna be three over S minus alpha, which is minus negative two plus two squared plus nine. Okay, from here to here, you take F of S minus negative two, which is S plus two. Wherever you have S, you add two in there. Um, to convert it to the Laplace transform for these functions. For the second functions, see what we have here. F of t equals to t times e to the 40, right? And this point said, oh, this is the functions e of t multiplied by t. This is alpha, okay? So then the goal is we wanna find the Laplace of e to the 4t first. And we know that it's gonna be one over s minus alpha, which is four. And the next thing is we need to find the negative derivative of this functions. And you can find that this, this is gonna be zero minus negative minus is gonna be positive. And then you have one times uh, S. So it's just gonna be derivative S minus four is one. So it's gonna be one over S minus four R squared. So then at this point, you know that this is the Laplace transform of F of T. And I wanna write it down F of T is should be T times E to the 40. Go to the last example here. We have f of t equals to t e to the negative t cosine of 2t. Okay. Well, in this case, we want to break this into these two functions. So if I can find this. Laplace transform for this function, then I can use a second theorem to find the Laplace transform of the last of the original functions. And in order to find the Laplace transform of this function, I can use a first theorem, right? And before that, I need to find the Laplace transform of cosine of 2t. It's gonna be equals to s over s squared plus four, okay? And then to find the Laplace transform of e to the negative t cosine of 2t, I'm just using um, this functions here. And then at this point, alpha equals to negative one. So s minus negative one is s plus one. So you have s plus one over s plus one square plus four. All right. And then I'm using the second theorem to find the Laplace transform of the original functions, this functions right here, by finding the negative, the derivative of this functions, which is this functions right here. So the derivative of this functions here, or you can just use, you can either use this, uh, find the derivative, or you can use a formula that we already derived here. So we derive that it's gonna be S minus alpha. Alpha is negative one. So S plus one square minus beta square. Beta is two. So minus four divided by S plus one square plus beta square, which is four and everything square. So this should be the Laplace transform of t e to the negative t cosine of 2t.
using the formula. As we define alpha and beta, we can use this formula here. Well, this remind me, this is not B, this should be beta. Right. For cosine of T. With more practice, you'll be able to find Laplace transform of this of this functions um, easily.